Hello everyone, welcome. <laughs> How is everyone doing? You can't see any of us yet, but I'm about to switch us over. And boom! <laughs> now you can see everyone. You're all on camera, hello. 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 <laughs> Chat, say hi. Hello, hello, hello. For anyone who is uh, wondering what's going on today, we are doing uh, an asexual advice panel. <laughs> whatever that may mean for you, whatever advice you would want to consult a panel of asexual people for. Some of us are Aero Ace, some of us are Ace only. Um, I don't think we have any Aero onlys, but it, there's a, a little bit of an intersection here. Um, and that's, it's a very laid back casual situation, but please do ask your questions. Not so much in chat, because I will lose them. Please use the form <laughs> that's pinned at the top of chat. Um, and I will be monitoring that uh, as we do this. So welcome everyone. I hope you guys, uh, I hope both the panelists and chat have a good time today. <laughs> um, let's actually do a quick round of introductions first so chat can get to know you. Um, starting with Lexin, if you could kick us off. Hello everyone, I'm Lexin slash QRbits. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Oh, and let me- And my uh, era. Yes. <laughs> So sorry, sorry. I realized I didn't say what should be in your introduction. Um, we all know because I told you all beforehand. But just so chat knows, uh, for everyone's introduction, I'm going to ask for their name, pronouns, their ace or their era identity, however they would self-describe it, um, how they define that identity, followed by like a really quick summary of their dating experience because happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we are all here on this panel instead of on a Valentine's Day date. So that tells you, I think, everything you might need to know. <laughs> um, sorry to cut you off, Lexan. Please continue. Okay, Lexi and she, her, I would say I'm not Arrow, I'm a spec, possibly dummy, but we won't know that until that happens. And then, no dating experience, but I have played around on dating apps, because it's fun. <laughs> That's about it. All right, moving on to Rin. Hello, everyone. Hi again, Rin, Rin Taicho. Uh, most of you know me, but just to refresh, pronouns are she, they. Um, it's been a journey about my sexuality, I guess, because I've gone, I've gone all over the place. But currently, at the moment, I'm leaning pansexual, ace, right now. That's what I've kind of come to um, accept and feel more comfortable with. Uh, but I've been. I've not been dating for about how many years now? Four, five years. But prior to that, I was in a relationship for like eight and a half years. And before that, another year. And then before that, like three to six months. So I've been like in a relationship for a good chunk of my 19 to 30 years of age. Right. So I've never actually experienced being alone for a while. Um, now that I'm here, it's felt great, but who knows it, it's a gender and sex sexuality is just like a journey so every day it's like maybe i might feel something different but right now pennies so yeah very fluid well said mm -hmm. um cool next up we have path hello my name is path and my pronouns are they them i identify as both asexual and aromantic and i actually have a really hard time describing what that means because it, it's not like i'm describing something to someone it's more like a, an absence of something right so i guess it's like I don't really have a strong desire for anything more than like being best friends with someone or like there's not there's not an extra layer of intensity to it i'm just kind of indifferent to anything beyond that um for the conventional idea of dating like going on actual dates i'm not super experienced with i'm i've gone on a couple of them but i also haven't really thought about them as anything more than just hanging out with a friend or um anything with the potential to lead to something more uh, i don't know i guess i don't know what a date is supposed to be um and that makes me very qualified to give dating advice <laughs> dating advice panel. absolutely um outside of that though i have been in several relationships that did not really involve dating or taking each other out on dates so um in my opinion an embarrassing amount of relationships for someone who is aromantic and um asexual looking back i'm actually shocked i didn't realize that i was aromantic sooner but that's okay we learn um, I just wanted to be best friends with these people. So <laughs> an emotional bond is the best bond. Well said, well said. <laughs> I, I feel like everyone's probably, or a lot of us are probably nodding our heads very vigorously <laughs> with this testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last but not least, we got Yasha. Wait, Yasha, are you oh. muted? <laughs> 
we were saying while what? we were gonna set oh, up. Gosh, yeah, she was like, I'm out. definitely gonna forget to unmute. Damn, how many freaking? Oh, wait, am I allowed to say bad words on YouTube? I <laughs> uh, whatever you want, honestly. <laughs> we'll I don't my bad. This space. Hi, my name is Yasha. Uh, pronouns? I haven't really thought about it. You can use any, but I guess she/her makes sense. Uh I'm pretty sure I'm Arrow Ace, but apparently I googled this. There is like a specific type within the arrow that like likes like reading romance and stuff like that because I, my i am like a slut for um shoujo <laughs> villainess reincarnation isekai shit like oh my god i like that's me every night i'm just reading it and i like live for it but like the actual thought of like being in a relationship just sounds exhausting and I've like just <laughs> never been interested in it in like real life I feel like reading it's fun you know what I mean it's like oh this is nice I'm like so like in a way I'm just like okay so like there's all these dokies happening here is it gonna happen in real life and I just look around and I'm like any day now <laughs> gonna happen and I just look around and it hasn't happened yet so I'm pretty sure I'm Arrow but all the oh. chat is like that real yeah I'm too. Just, same. <laughs> right so like I don't know uh, I want to be a dink and you know what that stands for? I know that sounds weird. It stands for <laughs> dual income, no kids. That's an actual <laughs> term. Okay. Like my idea of like a relationship, like, oh my God, it'd be so great to have someone pay bills with me. That'd be so fun. I was like, that's not a relationship. So I'm like, let's share the Shout tax arrow. burden, do the dishes <laughs> together. And also like, I just be, be friends that, that operate on economies yeah, of scale and save a lot of money together and spend time together. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I know I made it though. Not like that, that's not a doubt for me. But like the arrow part, I'm just like, eh. <laughs> arrow, question. Oh, <laughs> and relationships have not been in one because why? <laughs> like the <laughs> indifference is there. That's like, that's the indifference part, which is probably the arrow part in me speaking. Why though? <laughs> to think that me, who knows? Maybe me, me one day. Mm. All right, I appreciate you all bearing your souls for this uh, very eclectic collection of strangers on the internet. <laughs> Although we were saying before that this is probably gonna be a really cozy chat because I think, uh, at least based on the questions we've been getting, a lot of it has been coming from people who are fellow Aero Ace spec. So it'll, I think, be a very comfy space for us. Um, we will probably try to take a few questions from people who are genuinely just uh, like ask Abby style advice column. Help, I have this very specific problem and I want advice and we're gonna give you some Arguably, probably not very good advice as <laughs> Aero slash Ace people. So uh, I, I guess take it all with a grain of salt, but I think it'll be fun either way. So <laughs> I'll do my quick intro also. Hello, my name is Ying. I use any pronouns. Um, I am panromantic, asexual as of the current understanding. Uh, I think similar to Yasha, I'm like, I get the dokis in fictional settings and not a whole lot in real life. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, dating experience wise, I think I, okay, so I had a, oh my goodness, the fact that I have low attachment, um, it is, I had a high school relationship of like over a year or so, almost two years, it might have hit two years, and then I actually recently ended in August, a very long term, long distance relationship. Um, I guess that's a whole conversation topic on its own is like long distance relationships and aromantic or ace people because it's like arguably harder to tell or notice, right? The whole time I wasn't sure. Um, now I'm a little bit more sure, but it's still a very open question. So, okay. <laughs> um, now that we have introductions out of the way, I hope you all as chat are feeling well situated and like you have a pretty good understanding of who each of us is. If you have a question that's directed at one of us specifically, feel free to name us in your question. I will be monitoring that as we go along. But I'm gonna kick us off with like a really basic question that I think a lot of people, whether you're questioning or whether you know that you are Aero or Ace, uh, is always grappling with, which is this, is, this first question actually comes from Chocolate. Um, they're asking, how do you tell the difference between platonic and romantic love? I can't differentiate between the two and it's why I think I'm Aero. Um, I saw the same question echoed in a variety of ways through the entire question sheet. So I wanna start there. Um, Path, you look like you have thoughts. So I'm gonna ask you to start us off. How do you tell the difference? Um, I, I kind of talked about it in my intro, but like, I feel like there's a, a wall almost after uh, the initial um, emotional bond that I just can't go past. And I feel like if you're even questioning that a little bit, it's a it's a sign to kind of take a deeper look into yourself or, or what you think that might mean for a relationship or maybe you don't even want a relationship sometimes that's not asked it's like the question is usually 
uh, what do you look for in a partner, not necessarily do you even want a partner in the first place. And I think that that's a good uh, first spark, a first feeling to kind of figure it out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're saying to change the question that you ask, actually. Mm. Interesting. Rin, I know you were going off a little bit about this earlier, too. Could I ask for your thoughts? Oh, boy. Uh, for me, personally, platonic and romantic? I don't know. I would feel like... Like, platonic is more than just friends. There's a little bit more to it than that. But it's like... Think of it like a meter. You go... It's like a friendship meter. It grows and grows and grows. And then once you hit like a certain point, platonic, right? But anything past that, there's a very fine line between platonic and romantic. And it's really characterized to me one specific thing. And I think it's like, like an almost infatuation with the other person that you're interested in. Like you'll go above and beyond certain things or like things that um, you, you wouldn't even be considered of yourself or others around you. You just kind of like, it just kind of takes you over. That's kind of how I feel about it, but I don't well, know if that's... What's the difference between, like, wanting to be besties with someone, right? Exactly. That's what I mean. Like, how how do you define that? But that's kind of like, from my experiences, that's what I've noticed. So once I get an interest in someone, I kind of get a little obsessive about it. But with others, I can control myself about that because I don't have that kind of thought. But I don't, like, it's really weird <laughs> to talk about kind of like defined to me but that's kind of how i feel between platonic and romantic mm -hmm. the obsession that you bring up i think also raises i saw actually one of someone had asked a similar question like the intersection yeah. of your asexuality or aromanticity is that a word with your other like identities or labels or whatever it may be so mm. in my case like obsessiveness comes with adhd too right or yes. even in many cases like autistic people also experience a right. lot of varying degrees of like fixations um, mm. Like, how would you know the difference between... Because people can become hyperfixations, too. Yes, definitely. But who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> it's really hard, really hard to understand. Sorry. Um, sorry, I said it again. Canadian coming out. But that's <laughs> just kind of how I think about it. Um, but I don't think it's, like, set in stone, like, that's the answer. I think it's much more complicated than that. But mm -hmm. that's kind of how I kind of look at it at the moment. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Lexin, what do you think? Oh, well, this has all been very enlightening, as I i don't think I've ever <laughs> felt any romantic interest towards anyone, but I still don't think I'm arrow? Question mark? Mm, why do you say I that? Think, why do you not think you're Aero? I don't, I don't know. I really relate to Yasha in the, like, I really, like... Any day fictional. now, waiting for those dokies <laughs> sitting here, <laughs> We're waiting. looking at my treaty man. <laughs> yeah. But anytime I like feel like I, I kind of like someone, I like I'm like, yeah, I think I might like this person. But then I immediately get an ick and I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> right. I think I might it might be normal. Like I think being scared of liking someone is normal. So I think that might not be an indication of being arrow. So, <laughs> I don't know. Does that make sense? Being scared of liking someone was your phrasing there. Can you elaborate? On yeah, what means? like not wanting to reveal too much of yourself too fast, or like being afraid to be like um, vulnerable with someone is scary, or like getting too close to someone so that they know everything about you. That's scary too. Mm, three is saying you know, here, I agree as a non aero person. <clears throat> whenever I find myself developing feelings for someone, I'm just like, oh, bother. <laughs> I agree with three on that. That's kind of like what goes through my head when romance starts like going in through my head. So. Mm. Do you feel like that's like you can't provide the same amount of feelings? So that's why you feel like it's ick or scary because you're scared you can't feel the right feelings that they want? Or is it just like, oh, this is a new thing, so I'm not really sure. Like, which one is it? All right. I think it or... might be the second one. That you're not Getting sure what it is. Think about it. Hmm. Yeah. That is interesting. I'm thinking from my own perspective. It is scary to be vulnerable. Because that's you have to face things that you, you don't know. It's a new terrain. Uh, yeah, and I, I've certainly in my, I guess, two relationships had varying degrees of like being able to express any kind of romantic affection. Um, 
more definitely like in my first relationship, also because I was still in high school and like didn't know anything about anything, <laughs> was much more like locked away, right? And like uncertain how to express things. And then having also grown up in like an Asian American family where like your parents say, I love you by cutting you fruit and asking if you've had dinner. Like we, we never say the words, I love you, right? Like that's not something that comes out of my parents' mouths. Sometimes I wonder what kind of effect that had on my understanding of romantic affection too. Um, but I would say in my second relationship, I was a lot more like affectionate and I would like express that a lot more. Um, but I don't necessarily know. I definitely am also questioning like, am I really, am I somewhere on the panromantic spectrum as well? I know like there was a, like the, the demisexual thing is also a big thing, right? Where you have to like be comfortable with someone before you feel sexual attraction to them. Like I feel like probably, and I'm not very well read on the subject, but probably that would apply to lots of people on the panromantic, sorry, the, the romance spectrum as well on that axis. Well, Yasha, I haven't heard your yeah. answer to this yet also. How, how would you tell the difference? Or do you know at all how to tell the difference between- Bro, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest, like, I straight up don't know. I'm still here waiting for the dokies. Like, is it gonna happen? I think as someone who's like, just haven't, I haven't felt it. I actually agree with Path. Like there's like a wall. Like mm -hmm. I can get really, really close to someone regardless of gender. And I'm just like, that's cool. And then like if they actually express romantic feelings, which has happened before, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, but like, in, but I'm just like, but I really like them as a friend. And then you just feel like, oh my God, you're just friend zoning everyone. But then you're just like, yeah, but like, I'm not just friend zoning. Like I, I truly am friend zoning everyone, you know what I mean? Like everyone in my life. So it's like, that's, that's just how I view it. And I'm not saying it can't happen because you don't know the world's be weird and but I don't know mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer because I've never felt it I've been waiting for it and I feel like society has told me that like oh yeah you'll everyone's like when you meet that person you'll just know and I'm like I don't know a lot of things so I'm not sure I'll know like do you all get I'm that a little bit more instruction than that but okay like, have you ever come come out to someone and been like, oh, I'm aromantic or asexual, and then people will be like, oh, you just haven't met the right person yet? Like, oh, have constantly. you gotten like, But I also now just start with telling people I'm ace because, like, I am affectionate to all my friends equally. And if you are, like, a dude, they'll be like, oh, my God, she's touched my arm. Oh, she's clinging on to me. Oh, my God, she's flirting. I'm like, I don't fucking flirt. I don't flirt nobody. This is just how I am as a person. Get over yourself. It ain't about you. <laughs> like, that's literally <laughs> it. So I just started off so I don't like get any misunderstandings in my life. Mm. So it still happens, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I don't know the answer, dude. I'm still trying to figure it out. I think I'm suspecting a lot of the questions today. It's going to be like, that's a good question. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, I wonder. <laughs> But it's okay, because I think the discussion itself and hearing like your, your thought processes and your reasoning and your experiences is already in and of itself like valuable, right? Like we see so many like same or like this is fresh to me. I've never heard this before. Yeah. Your experiences are are valuable really for your for chat to experience together too. So I hope I hope you all feel seen out there. <laughs> I think that's the importance of these kinds of conversations. Um, so actually to push to push even further on that point that we had about uh, like not necessarily feeling the need for romance in your lives or for a sexual relationship in your lives. Um, and this is also kind of asked by, uh, let me see, oh, they were anonymous. So I don't know who asked this, but um, let me let me read their question first. They ask, as someone who's so demi Aero Ace that I can't figure out my orientation to this day, I've kind of given up on the dating scene, including Aero Ace dating spaces. Instead, I've decided to vibe and focus on making friends. If I developed a once in a decade attraction to one of my friends, then I'd go from there, but I'm in a lucky position to not be pressured nor rushed to stop being single. Am I onto something or am I doing this wrong? Um, does anyone want to take I want to do that. First? You're doing great. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That's, Wait, I'm I broke, agree, though. do that. That's good. I think that's the best Absolutely way to go about it right something. now. Does anyone, oh, like, do you ever worry? In my case, at least whenever I ponder this question, it comes from a place of like, but like, how will I know that this is, like, what if there could be more, I guess, is the question that I get stuck on. Do you do things outside of your comfort zone, like meet people? You can't force a relationship, but you can create regular relationships in life by interacting with people. It doesn't always have to be in a dating app. It could just be, I go to anime conventions and I meet some cool people and then we became friends. Or like, oh, I was playing a game and then we made friends on Discord. Things don't have to always have a goal. You can sometimes just do things and then things happen. I feel like that's usually what good friendships are. Like, how the fuck do we become friends? Cool, that a con. 
randomly. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. And now look at us doing a podcast. Is this a podcast? <laughs> is this a podcast? I, I guess it is now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you never know. Mm. Would I guess I'll go around and ask each of you, like, would you personally be content with like this hypothetical future where you never find like a sort of romantic or sexual or whatever life partner it is sort of by the common societal understanding of it? Like, would you feel satisfied with a life led that way? A thousand percent, yes. And given my experiences up to this day, yeah. I don't, all my previous relationships have been, I've gone into with the idea that I want to date this person. So, but I found there's a flaw with that because I didn't really have a foundation to build upon with them, like interests or how they are, what they do, quirks, things like that. And then you kind of just learn them as you go through as you date. And with all of them, I ended up finding things that we didn't agree on, things that were kind of deal breakers, things like that. But we tried to just kind of, you know, work through it because when you're attracted and romantically involved with someone, you think like, oh, we'll just get through this because power of love, haha. No, <laughs> right? That's also one of my biggest pieces of advice that anybody, communication is like top one, bar none. Everything is all about communication relationship. Um, but the way it is now for me, I don't want to do blind dates. I don't want to do dating apps. I never use a dating app. Um, how I would be comfortable with is just meeting people regularly, just creating friendships out of nowhere. And just kind of letting things naturally happen and if it happens it happens if it doesn't cool we still can be friends and nothing else right you don't have to worry mm. about all that pain ever again it feels like a foolproof way never to get hurt again but <laughs> this is just me right kind of my way of like wanting to go into this so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> how about you lexan do you think that would be a satisfying existence especially since you're questioning right you're a romantic side mm. possibly but you don't think so what, what kind of like when I, I pose to you that hypothetical, what's the sort of gut reaction? I think that is a great thing for this person. <laughs> I think they shouldn't question this because, you know, it's a lot of people's dreams like, yeah, I want to get a house with all my friends and live there until we're like all old and just hang out all the time. That sounds like a great time. When I look into my future, I think there's someone there. Mm. That's what I feel. But like, um, I feel like I'm a very, like, fantastical, romantic person. It was like, I have a lot of fantasies about what could be, but the reality is that, like, I have to actually go and uh, find that person. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> I have a question. Suck, which will, which will suck. I have yes. a follow up for that in just a moment, for sure. But I want to hear Pat's, um, especially because you are actually pretty, I mean, seem like you're really comfortable identifying as Aero Ace. Um, is this basically like the future that you've made peace with yourself for? Honestly, yeah, I think that I can feel fulfilled just with friendships and like familiar, or like my family as well. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I I feel a lot more um, just from that kind of relationship rather than a one to one relationship with another person. Um, and I don't know if it's just like me being a little jaded from my past relationships or anything like that. Like that could definitely play a, a part of it. But for now, the way that I do see my future, it is kind of like just just living off of the fumes of uh, <laughs> the relationships with my friends and, and things like the that. The fumes. You make it sound like there's like not a whole lot to go on. <laughs> but actually it's I like mean, a rich abundance of very positive it is. fumes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. That's true. Mm, so to pursue down that that path that we've been talking about in terms of like uh, I think a lot of us, especially I think Lex and I like relate a lot to your vision of like, I think I look into the future and I see someone there, but I don't really know how that is going to come into being. Um, there is a question here actually from Callahan. Uh, I'm just going to read it out. Uh, how do y'all reckon is the best way to approach a love interest who you know is 100% allosexual? For those who don't know, allosexual is basically like the opposite end of the asexual spectrum. So where asexual is like, I'm definitely no sexual attraction, allosexual would be the opposite, like so-called normal, right? Sexual attraction. Um, when you yourself are sex averse. They're cool, you vibe, there may be mutual feelings, but you just are not into rolling in the hay, all that jazz. Um, how would you approach someone like that? So hang on, they're interested in us and we're interested in them, but there's they're a potential, right? They're there's a potential and there, you're but not. Ace yeah. and Ali, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a tough one. <laughs> that's right? a really tough one. 
Because sex is a huge thing between partners, for sure. And it can definitely be a deal breaker. Um, from my own experience. I don't know if it can work, honestly. <laughs> mm. I honestly don't know if it could work because if someone feels like they're lacking something in a relationship, it's going to lead to a whole bunch more problems. So I just don't think it's a good idea. But that's all you also said communication is key, right? Communication you can is key. communicate your right? way out of a problem like that? I don't know if you can communicate something like that, though. That's the thing. I think that's super important to mm -hmm. uh, discuss early on. So communication, good. Like, if you want to stay friends, it's great. But if you want to get into a relationship, you got to lay things out for the, your potential partner, like right away, this is this, this, and this kind of thing. So Not to get super corporate, but you got to set expectations. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, here's the contract. This is what I expect. You want to... Renegotiate these terms, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not like that. Don't start dating like that, obviously, right? <laughs> Have a nice open relationship. <laughs> okay, with totally. You are to yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Has anyone faced this problem before? Like, as someone who is asexual? Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's like, I have thoughts. <laughs> Well, that Doesn't it really also kind of depend on like the romance aspect? Because if you really, really like them romantically, you even though you're sex averse, maybe you'll be willing to do some stuff for them. You know, it just feels like it's like a exactly. task because you're going to make them happy because you want them yeah. happy so badly. So I feel like it's also on that end, like mm -hmm. how much do you like them? You know, you and there's do a whole that... axis here of like sex aversion too, right? Like not all yeah. asexual people are sex averse. Some people are like, fine, okay with it. Like, I'm not going to pursue it, but I'm like down, I guess, if it fulfills my partner's needs. Other <laughs> equipment that you can use, but I guess it's not the same. But I guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Wait, Path, you look like you were going to say something. Um, I just think that in any relationship, there's going to be a little bit of a disconnect with like the amount of um, interest people have in the intimate side of things. Sorry, I am going to dance around the language a little bit, mm. but um, so it, it will always come down to like setting your own boundaries and, and being sure of what you want and what you feel comfortable um, compromising or like uh, get, like giving and taking within the relationship f for the benefit of them and yourself. Um, that's it <laughs> for, for any relationship, not just uh, Ace and Aloe, but yeah. all along the spectrum understanding what your personal boundaries, preferences, like where are you okay to meet with in the middle and where do you draw the line and set your boundaries? As long as that's like written out clearly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe not literally. To communicate that exactly. is, is really important. It's a good way to put it. Um, on, on this front, Lexan, I know you said like that we were joking earlier about like, well, how do you find this person? Have you made attempts before? How did that go? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How have I made attempts? I have I've been open, mm -hmm. I guess, to like uh, people getting close and seeing what happens, but it doesn't usually go that well. Or I tried the dating app thing because I was like, yeah, I'm gonna prove myself and to other people that I can make a dating profile that seems legit seems <laughs> or attract legit. the kind of people I think <laughs> that I like and who will like me and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think everyone agrees that dating apps are kind of like, uh, <laughs> like it's really hard to get something legit off of them. Um, oh, as for the question that you originally posed mm -hmm. to everyone, like I used to be on the Ace subreddit a lot, and there's a lot of people with like Aloe and Ace relationships, but most of those Ace people are not sex averse, so that's like a big thing. Um, I don't Do know you if it's sex averse, sex averse? Yeah, it or are you not sure? I don't think so. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you think it could work out then if, if, Possibly. if you were able to work out that so-called contract that everyone was saying? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like, about... dating apps are already so hard, even for the allosexuals. Like, I know. Harder for the rest of us. <laughs> I also know people who are allosexual and ace, and they are in a relationship. They're just not sex averse. Like I want mm -hmm. that. A relationship. That sounds nice. Mm. I can be pink. <laughs> Does anyone know any like also ace be... and ace? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can also be. I was gonna say. I think he can also be sex averse and allo. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. That's true. How does that <laughs> I wonder how that works. Oh, like, like, regular sexual interest. And then Ace is like, oh, I guess Ace is an adversary. It's just like low mm -hmm. desire. Mm -hmm. It's like the radar is. Right. Which is also, it's different from libido as well, right? That's oh, no. like yet another yeah. thing. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so many layers. <laughs> so many variables. <laughs> this is calculus. Yeah, it's a complicated topic. And I think uh, we were all having this discussion before as I was pulling people onto the panel, everyone was like, you know, I'm not like an expert. Like I don't know the words. I'm not like a scholar in this space and I don't know how to talk about it. And I'm like, that's okay. Cause your lived experience is all we need. Right? So I, I guess the, no, I, the disclaimer I want to leave here is like, take our wording with a grain of salt, sand. Please, like salt. Yes. How was the, Please take right? it with a grain of salt. A grain of salt, <laughs> grain of salt. Yes, take all of our wording choices with a grain of salt. Um, as long as you understand, I think that we're just trying to find words to use to explain our personal experiences. That's all that really matters, yeah. Okay, um, I think it would be funny if we like tried to give advice. <laughs> Do you guys want to attempt? Let's go. You were about to mention. Down. I wrote, okay. I down. <laughs> Ying, you were about to mention Prepared. if you ever met an aloe oh, person or something. No, so actually, yeah, that's a great point. I forgot about that question. Yeah. Um, have you? Do any of you know couples that are both both of the people in the partnership, or um, I don't know, polycule? I guess if it's relevant, that would be. I don't know how that would work in a romantic side. But um, have you met people in relationships where everyone is ace? Everyone is ace. Yeah. Uh, oh, surprisingly, no. It's only usually one of them. I'm thinking about the relationships that I know. Which yeah, I'm also, hope. yeah. <laughs> I think I know of a of a couple who one of them is ace and the other just has a low libido, so it doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. I don't think the other person identifies as ace necessarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I can't think of one right now. No. But well, they're like not ace or oh sorry not low libido they're just regular but they're like the partner's willing to just nah whatever if you want this then i'll do it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. huh. they're like legendary pokemon out there <laughs> yeah all right the other legendary pokemon is um a a romantic allosexual i know oh, okay. one person like that yeah, I think one everyone's person. like, I know one person. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's I know it. one person. Yeah, <laughs> one person, not a couple, though. Mm -hmm. That's different. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. All right, y'all want to try some advice? I have, I have a request here from Stag. Let's do it. <laughs> so Stag is asking, old high school best friend confessed over a Discord message this morning that he's been in love with me for nine years. I don't think he knows what being Aero or Ace is. I also don't think he knows that I came out as trans mask despite having my pronouns in my bio. I have no idea what to do. I ignored his message, but he sent another one and I found out that our mutual friend, the only person in that friend group I still hang out with uh, on the regular, encouraged him to confess to me. She used to ship us in high school. She knows I'm trans mask and Aero Ace. Ugh, 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 please send help. <laughs> Oh, and Stag identifies as Arrow Ace specifically. Oh. It's Wait, so this person of nine has been been in love with you for nine years, but you haven't kept in touch with them because it sounds like they are in love with the idea of you of whatever they thought of like nine years ago. They didn't keep up with any of your pronouns that you changed. You didn't keep up with your sexuality that you changed. You that sounds like a them problem. Not gonna <laughs> lie, because it's very easy to look back and be like. Oh my god, yeah, like, when they're this, they're so nice, and just, like, remembering all these things in the past, but that's not who you are now. And right now, they say they're, they're in love with you, and right now they want a relationship with you, which means you should just be like, um, excuse me, actually, you, know, you, know, you, you could just ghost them, <laughs> but, like, but you should probably also, excuse me, excuse me, and then explain your life, and if they don't like that, then, again, that's them, <laughs> that's their problem. You don't have to say more than that. Three is saying here, put that boy down lightly, but put that boy oh. down. <laughs> I did not say lightly. <laughs> I, was, I did not say it lightly. I kind of was like, yeet. <laughs> I really yeeted it up across the room. We should ask people who are nicer in this in this panel. Please, please mm -hmm. put in some nice input. <laughs> How does everyone yeah. else feel? Same react. I saw Rin nodding. I think I saw Path nodding as well. Would you Would you say no. anything different? No, I think that's solid advice. I think yeah, I should put it perfectly. Absolutely. Yes. If they really liked you, they would have kept up with you. If they really liked you, they would have, you know, if you were going through like that difficult transition or at least anything in your life, they would have reached out to you. But they love you, but it sounds like they love the idea of you years ago. You know, whatever you were nine years ago. And 
I like to think people change, because if I still acted like I did when I was 11, that'd be a problem, you know? We'd be on Gaia Online or something. <laughs> We'd be on Gaia <laughs> Online. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, mm. if they really liked you, they wouldn't have confessed over Discord. <laughs> oh. yeah, what do you guys feel about confessions in like text messages, actually, or things like that? How do you feel about that? I actually, I think it's fine because uh -huh. it's a little bit, it adds a little bit of a barrier for me to have room to like process it and also mm. to come up with a response. Um, or to figure out how I feel, um, and to also maybe not be as nervous when I'm talking to them about it. So honestly, I don't think it's that, that big of a deal. I do understand, though, like, um, that it can be a little off-putting. Right, because, yeah, a lot of people says if you really like them, you should do it as physically possible as you can, but... Yeah, but not everybody exactly. like, thrives with that kind of communication. Right, right, exactly. I also, also feel sorry. Go oh, ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I also feel comfortable when I'm typing more than I'm trying to like yeah, me too. put words together. Mm. Um, but I also kind of feel like I should try to do this IRL, but I feel like I can get my point across more uh, clearly if I were able to take my time and type it out. So this is my two cents on that. But yeah, how does everyone else feel about that? I might make the other person more comfortable too because they have time to think about it. Mm. You know, so you're not right in front of them where you're just like. Oh no. I mean, I guess we could not. I right. feel like you don't have to give me an answer right now, but you're still hanging out. So you're just like. Yeah. You guess sure? we'll just look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Path, you said you dated actually quite a lot. Has it, um, like, of those confessions, have you had like a preference for how the relationships begin in your experience? And um, would you I'm date male... again, I guess, given your experience? That's a good question. That is the question. <laughs> but um, as far as how the relationships like start, I feel like they've all, all of them have started with a confession and then me being like, well, I don't want to lose them as a friend. So mm. I don't like I'm OK to try something. I see where this goes because I don't want to lose the friendship that we have mm. um, and it, it's kind of a double-edged sword because at the end of the relationship, you lose two relationships. You lose the friendship and the relationship. So not my best moments, I would say. <laughs> well, have you managed to keep... You make it sound like every single relationship has ended with an ended friendship as well. Is that true like across the board? Not, not my recent one, not my last one, but that one ended because I came to the realization that I was actually a romantic. Ah. So <laughs> it ended on good terms for still friends, but under different circumstances for sure. Did you have an aha moment? You said you came to the realization. Like, what was it that oh, yeah. home? Therapy. So Therapy. <laughs> Therapy. Yeah, the answer to yes. probably everyone's questions uh, in this chat, but Agreed. definitely helped a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Therapy is so good. Highly recommend everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend. Yeah. I'm a strong advocate of Healthy Gamer GG coaching. <laughs> yeah, go. Do now, therapy as a healthy professional. Stream. I Not recommend sponsored. <laughs> Dr. K, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I do have a question that is, I think, very in line with probably what Yasha was talking about um, in terms of like fictional Doki Doki feelings, right? So I'm curious what every, actually everyone's thoughts, but we'll start with Yasha. Um, so the question is from, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's Ly Lyrion Lyrion. I'm pretty young, and my understanding of romance has been learned from media, more specifically fan fiction, probably. I desire a fiction-like relationship in which my love for someone consumes me and swells my heart, etc. But I also feel like being able to love someone like that is not possible for me. Just questioning Aero things. Is my idea of romance just too rooted in fantasy and I need to start being realistic? Or do beautiful fiction-like romances exist in real life? Would love to hear chat's thoughts as well. I just wish that one day I'm able to fall into someone's arms and feel like I'm home. Oh, <laughs> I know the um, last line. I was like, I, was like oh, I hope that happens for uh, you. I'm not saying it's not impossible. Um, let's see. So romance is actually broken into three separate things in psychology. So there's like the intimacy, right? Of like, just like you have with your friends. Sorry, I'm just pulling up my development. I, I was like, <laughs> the oh my God. No, but there's like intimacy where you feel with your friends. There's like a commitment. And then there's an infatuation of like, 
just like that swelling feeling, right? You can have only, you can have two, you can have all three. The healthiest are the ones with three. Of course, like within the spectrum of like old DSM stuff. And then like there's you can also just have one, right? Like there's like it has expanded greatly. Um, I think that media is a good start, but I think when you make real relationships, even just your friendships, like media also does, like think of Haikyuu. I mean, media of anime is like, are your, all your friendships like in Haikyuu? Let's be honest. It's a, it, it ain't like you wish it was. We all wish it was, but it, it's not like that, right? There's like that level of fantasy, but you do have moments when you're, you can love your friends as much as they love their teammates, right? So I, I don't think it's unrealistic to like look at media and then like take pieces of it but I will say I think it's unrealistic if you think it's going to be exactly like that. Like it's it's never going to be exactly like that. It's going to be pieces of it. Because the heart swelling feeling like your home could just be like you had a hard day, like just a really rough day. You come home and like your significant other just did the laundry for you because you, they knew you were gonna you're gonna be too tired, and that could give you the Acts like of the, service. the swelling <laughs> feeling, right? Or you could have like you know, really passionate, whatever crap, like other stuff that I don't think I'm allowed to say on YouTube. And that can give you the soul. <laughs> I don't think like you need like a, like a boundary to define it. You can, it could be anything and it, and you can take pieces from media, but don't go in with, if it's not this bar, then it's not right. Like that's, that's just not how it works. Did I, I would also add, question? like, a lot of it probably comes from life experience, right? Like, this question asker mentioned that they're quite young still. Probably, like, as you make more and more types of friendships and, like, found family experiences in your life, you start to, I, at least for me, I have that heart swelling feeling in lots of different situations, and most of them actually are fully platonic, right? Um, like, what was it? We, recently, we did a stream with, like, it was, like, the mod feast. We, like, brought over a bunch of the mods to my house, and we were cooking together. I absolutely was looking around the kitchen that day, like, with my heart full of love, right? But it was all platonic love, and it was that, that swelling feeling that you read about in, like, fantasy novels or whatever. But was it romantic? Not at all. Um, that was the big found family feeling. And I think those kinds of experiences will become more common and come in all the different flavors that they come in. You'll start to experience those just, like, as you live your life, so... Um, it may not be exactly, it's like what Yasha said, it may not be exactly like how you read about it or how you see happen in the TV shows, but I think it's a feeling that you will experience in a variety of ways, yeah. How about you, Path? Big ol' smile on your face. <laughs> no, I just, I just enjoy this conversation. I like, um, I do think that it is important to keep in mind that it won't be exactly how, how you read about it in fan fiction. Um, that's just, that's just life. Mm. Lexan, have you, and again, I keep coming back to this, that you're like, don't think you're aromantic, but you haven't had a lot of experience on this side. Like, have you experienced immense romantic attraction towards someone in that way? Uh, I, I really relate to this question asker, probably because when I was young, I was kind of like that. Um, and I'm pretty good at picking out tropes too. I'm pretty good at shipping people. And finding out what kind of relationships other people <laughs> might be good at in, you know? Um, and picking out like, okay, I'm this archetype. So my ideal partner would be that archetype. But like, that is not how real life works. <laughs> so you might end up liking people who are not shippable with mm -hmm. you or um, present the same tropes that you read about in fan fiction or fiction. Um, but I do relate to a lot of what Ying said, as in like, when I was little, I watched a lot of Lucky Star. I don't know how many people <laughs> watch Lucky Star. <laughs> I just loved that feeling of like, friends who just chat about nothing all day and are just with each other. And that's like the warm feeling. And I didn't really have that in like middle school or high school, but in college I found that. And I was like, this is, oh my God, I'm living Lucky Star right now. <laughs> um, so that fiction came true, but that was platonic. We will find out if fan fiction can exist in real life, I guess, <laughs> in the future. <laughs> At least for me, I like I go to weddings and I listen to the bride and groom. Usually it's a bride and groom in my case. <laughs> I have yet to go to a gay wedding. I'm waiting. Someone sign me up. Um, but I listen to the bride and groom, my friends, right? Like say their vows to each other. And it all they always make it sound like a fairy tale, right? 
So it feels like, oh, I guess people do live like a fairy tale. I mean, I know it's not perfect every day, right? But I guess some aspect of it must be true or there wouldn't be so much media fiction generated about it. I don't know. I feel very much like, I, I think I, even though I'm probably a lot older than the person asking this question, I, st I still definitely have the question of like, well, like maybe someday, <laughs> I don't know. It feels like it's possible, like it could be out there. Um, I don't think the heart swelling feeling has to be a grand gesture. Because when I look at like, I have some friends that are married and like when they speak fondly of like their significant others, they're just like, yeah, I really um, like my husband because he's just so reliable. And I just feel mm -hmm. like just so safe with him. And it's never like, oh, he did this one thing. He saved me from a bear and I'll never forget that day in my heart. <laughs> so it was never like something like that. It was just like, once we were got lost in the airport because something got delayed, but like I was like freaking out and he was really calm and you know, we got, everything was fine. And it was just like small, really tiny things. And from just all the married people I've spoken to, it's always small things and it's- But is that not know. also, for me at least that's extra confusing then. Cause I'm like, that's the same way I appreciate my friends. So like, how do I know no. the no, difference? You don't, you don't. I was gonna say you don't fuck your friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you're talking to a panel of ace people. It's not that this we don't fuck our friends, it's that we don't fuck anyone. This is true. I mean, you don't know. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> don't make assumptions, Ying. <laughs> We've yeah, established certain things on this particular group of people where I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess sort of a facet of this is like, uh, because so much of this is sort of comparing our experiences with what we understand to be like the norm, right? Or the expected societal model of falling in love and finding a partner and getting married and having a kid together and raising them and growing into old age and having each other's back at the airport together. <laughs> um, that these are how we understand, like, at least until you figure out your own identity and sort of make peace with it in many ways. And I think a lot of us are still on that journey. Um, it's a constant battle of comparing yourself against what is expected of you. Um, and so this question asker, actually, Mawia, <laughs> very cute, is asking, um, for me, it feels like whenever I compare how I think about relationship things to how other people do, I'm some alien who has it all in 5D twisted dimensions. Sometimes it's fine and other times it can scare me. Does that feeling ever go away? Did any of you all like have that experience coming through this? as you figured things out. I think I can start a little bit as you all process it. <laughs> um, Cause I think a lot of my questions do come from, so actually uh, one of the core questions of this is like, how do you, how did you even figure out to begin with that you were on the A spectrum? Um, and one of the biggest things for me, the same way I found out I had ADHD and should probably get tested was on Twitter when people were like talking about their experiences, right? In the same way that I think this panel is valuable to people where you're like, oh, like that's exactly how I experienced it too. Someone was talking about how one of their biggest tells was they noticed that whenever they met someone and decided whether or not to date them, that it, they were going, and this may be more of an ARO experience than an ACE experience, but they were like checking things off on a list. Like, okay, uh, it's kind of like what what uh, what Lexan was saying earlier, that you have like a list of like compatibility traits or something that you, maybe it's not super conscious, but you have a sense of like, what is the correct partner for me? Um, and then I, I definitely caught myself like checking things off a list. Like, oh, like, you know, you're, you're a studious, dependable person. Um, like your, your, your family is also uh, an immigrant family like mine. Therefore we, you know, have a lot in common. Um, like, you know, these kinds of things you start going down the list uh, in a way that is extremely, almost coldly logical and not the way that I read in, in romance novels or see on TV of the way people like have love at first sight experiences or like someone does a grand or small gesture and they are like, oh, that's the moment I knew that I was like in love with this person. So for me, at least, I don't think that feeling of like, oh, I guess other people experience it differently. I don't think that's ever gone away, but I felt less and less like an alien because I started to realize as I explored other aspects of my identity, the ADHD thing is like the biggest thing in my life right now that like actually everyone kind of experiences everything kind of differently. And so I'm not an alien because I'm like different from everyone else. It's that everyone is all unique in their own ways of experiencing life. And like romance is one aspect of that. But even the people who like may relate more to the so-called fantasy love story are still having their experiences like very different from each other. So for me, at least that's how I 
I guess, rationalized it in my head and explained it to myself. That's, that's what makes sense to me. I feel less different understanding that everyone else is different as well, in summary. Yeah. Did anyone have thoughts about this 5D Twisted Dimensions aliens comparison question? <laughs> Jade in animation. Who you're friends with? <laughs> Wait, Lexan, what was that? She, oh, it depends on who you're friends with. Because I'm currently friends with a lot of very understanding people, a lot of which are also like Ace or Arrow Ace. Mm -hmm. But like when I was younger, like my the people I was around were very aloe. And those people, I was like, hmm, something's weird here. Why is everyone hooking up in middle school? <laughs> and then when I visit back as an adult, they're like, so are you still ace? Are you sure you're still ace? Have you not hooked up with anyone yet? I'm like, with those people, I kind of feel a little weird. But nowadays with my current friends, I'm like, this is chill. I think uh, everyone is kind of going through it <laughs> in their own way, like you said. I have a. Oh, so I watch a lot of dating shows. Watch a lot of dating shows. <laughs> Singles Inferno yeah. on Netflix. I watched oh, have you been watching Singles, Singles Inferno? Inferno. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> season one was more interesting. I got bored. Oh season no, no, season one's better. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? I, maybe I didn't make it far enough in season two. <laughs> I stopped watching season two. Mm -hmm. They added too many people. Anyway. Um, the checking things off of lists definitely happened. And I remember mm -hmm. in high school, because everybody was in a relationship, I pretended to like someone. I was just like, okay, let me just choose some dude in the class that is very popular. And I'm just like, that's him. Yeah, that's the guy. And even though he checked off all the things on my list, I still didn't want to be with him. And I was just like, it's not weird. I was like, maybe this is normal. Maybe this is how other people feel. And then they'll describe stuff. And I'm just like, good for you i'm happy for you you know and i'm just like maybe i just need time you know and you like think about it and then you're just like I, but i really just don't care <laughs> you know and then like after i think middle slash high school era like not, it's not all about relationships anymore right because you go to call because there's like you finally go to college where there's like a bigger realm of people and it's like you're doing hobbies and stuff and you can like be more independent and then it stops only being about relationships because you can have a group that only talks about their so but then you can have another group that's like oh my god i want to go to france you know and now we call it spend france and you know right you can go end up hanging more with those people and then but then they get in relationships and then now you're just here like i don't care about that part i don't know is it i mean mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me i don't feel weird anymore but i think that was a with a with time because mm -hmm. it was i need to blend in in the beginning and then it became like i don't really care anymore <laughs> near the end so mm -hmm. yeah i don't know yeah this actually raises some interesting questions i was also reading what kai was putting in chat about how like this can be an expression like like randomly picking someone on the playground to become your next crush is like also a common experience not just with asexual or aromantic people but also with like comp head right so like if you're a lesbian and you don't know yet like this is a common experience for example um and so i guess this is i i, I think i saw kaya ask this question in the forum as well I'm curious maybe we'll do this round robin style um for how this intersects with your other identities like your understanding of yourself as aero and or ace um and whatever other experiences you have <laughs> in, in your life whatever it doesn't have to be micro labels but however you identify and what your experiences are like how has it affected those other aspects of your personality or your life uh i'll start with rin can you rephrase that question a little bit simpler? Yeah, so like, <laughs> uh, let me see if I can simplify that a little. You're right, it was a little yeah. convoluted. Let me see if I can find Kaya's question, actually. I think they phrased okay. it a lot better. Um, okay, how do y'all think being A-spec affect, uh, a affects your other identities and vice versa, if you're comfortable sharing? Come back to me on that one. Let me think about that a little bit more. <laughs> okay. What do they mean by other identities? Um, so like, for example, in my case, uh, I'm like, like I think Rin and I both identify, for example, as pan ace, right? So like figuring out each of those parts is like, not only is it trying to figure out whether you experience romantic attraction, but also who you experience romantic attraction to, right? It really muddies the waters. 
Um, and, I, and I know one of our earlier question asks, askers that we discussed also said, um, I'm so demi Aero Ace that I don't even know who I'm attracted to. Like, I know I experience attraction, but I can't figure out if there's a pattern in it. <laughs> um, Keep letting it go. You will it'll eventually. <laughs> Humans are great at figuring out patterns. Eventually, you'll figure it out. But maybe it's the above. <laughs> or maybe it's none of the above. Who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Ren, you Ren should answer the question. <laughs> so, how my how I come to think about my asexuality, how it affects everything else? Is that how? It, question yeah, went? like what or how the interplay is between all of your, like when we say pan romantic asexual, for example, that's like a lot in one phrase. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that means I will hold hands with anyone, but right. I don't want to sleep with an anybody. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Oh but my god, yeah. I don't know. So, it's just but like, like, hold hands with them, like, like hold hands with them? Because I hold hands with everybody. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit about them. I mean, <laughs> like, the act of hand-holding with someone is, to me, like, a nice gesture. It can be, like, a romantic and platonic gesture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, little things like that, as well as, like, gift-giving, acts of service, stuff like that. Those, when we're talking about, like, things that make your heart swell. Yeah, little mm -hmm. things like that, I think, are... Like sometimes before, like used to make my head just go like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is great! I love this!" Right? Um, but oh, where's my? I don't know. That's a difficult question to answer. <laughs> I need to think about that one a little mm -hmm. bit more. Kaya did add an elaboration in chat also, um, and they specify mm. that by other identities, they also mean ethnicity, romantic orientation, gender identity, etc. So all aspects of your identity. Um, I think ethnicity oh. here is actually probably a pretty big piece for a lot of us too. And I have a follow-up question once you all right. have a moment to process and answer pick someone else please <laughs> let me think about this a little bit more <laughs> all right path i'm putting yeah. you think, on the spot <laughs> yeah i think i can say i because when we were talking about the last question that was asked it did come to mind that there was a huge layer of confusion not necessarily like feeling alien but like wondering is it because i'm bi or is it because i'm lesbian like i didn't know and there was no way for me to know because I was like 15, right? And like I didn't have any experiences whatsoever. So I actually came out like three times. The first time I did come out as bisexual. Um, the second time I uh, just came out as pan romantic asexual. And then now I, I think I'm pretty confident in the fact that I'm actually just aromantic asexual. So there, I feel like, yeah, I feel like there are a lot of layers to that that you have to kind of guide yourself through and it's very difficult because no one else can help you with this. This is kind of something that you have to figure out on your own. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, this is conveniently, first of all, you anticipated my next question, but um, there's also a lot of other questions that we saw, uh, which were about, um, wait, sorry, I, I actually lost the thread on that. Well, could you repeat like the last thought you had earlier? In, do you remember what your last thought Which was? one? No. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, Rin, did you want to add? Still, still going over it, but mm -hmm. uh, because all my relationships that I would consider like the important ones at the time, it was cisgender. They were hetero relationships, right? But that was from a time of when I was questioning my gender identity since I was like, like I've known something that was different with me ever since I was like six years old, for sure. Um, but when I started getting into relationships with people, I think the first one was when I was about 17 years old and that continued on until I was like 30. So mm -hmm. From 17 to 30, I lived a very just cis hetero lifestyle. But the moment I was on, it let me like kind of really think about what I wanted and what I was attracted to. Um, I couldn't find the answer to that because I didn't know any of these terms. I'm still learning terms today, actually, like. I'm still very unclear on demisexuality a little bit, but I feel like it's making a lot more sense now. But like the idea of being genderqueer, then gender fluid, and then eventually coming to terms with myself being transgender. And then alongside that, the types of people that I'm attracted to where I thought I was just straight, then it became bi, then I learned what pansexuality was. And I really liked that idea. So I just kind of like ran with that and then after my last open relationship with someone, I kind of figured out that I'm definitely ace <laughs> because mm. I, it, I don't know, just that level of int intimacy kind of just icks me now. I really want to get into it. 
right? It's almost, but I don't know though, at the same time, like I've done it before, so I have experience with it, so it doesn't bother me, but it's like, I can live without it now, but going all the way back to something we mentioned earlier about communication and like whether it might be a deal breaker or not, maybe I might be able to like allow it, but will I feel comfortable with it? I have no idea still. So, but mm. I'm like, I feel like I'm still questioning like myself every day here. So <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm, so pulling on that through, I actually, so Momo in chat reminded me actually what it was about Pat's answer that sparked something here, which is that mm. there's actually a lot of questions that we have about uh, like, what should I do type questions, right? Like, are, I don't really know what should I do is kind of a common one. Um, or like, how did you figure it out is also coming from that similar place. And I think that point that you all are making of like, everyone's experiences are different. And the way you experience, like we might go by the same micro labels, but the, we actually experience those labels differently and they mean different things to us. Mm. Um, and so one of these question askers, V, 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 was like quite a long one, but uh, at the very top they asked, how do I know which point of the arrow A spectrum I'm on? Should I try looking for a relationship to at least be able to experience it? If I do start a relationship, how do I tell them? Um, these kinds of questions, a lot of it, I think what we're getting at here as the panel is like you kind of just have to trial and error your way through it yeah i yeah. think like just make friends <laughs> really <laughs> and see where it goes from there and if you feel uncomfortable with it speak up right away then that will help you kind of like narrow down like how you want to like label yourself and also just like don't want to label yourself because mm -hmm. i think labels are important but i also think it's also equally important to not bound yourself to something Right. Because some people mm -hmm. feel like once they've assigned like something to themselves, they can't hop out of that box because you put that out there. You can't go back on that word. It's kind of like you lock this thing in that you want. But no, that's not true. Suddenly you, there's yeah. rules you have to follow. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> that's there's not the no point. rules. There's no contract for this one, guys. Don't worry about this. <laughs> like, you can do whatever you want. Like you, you this is what my dad told me <laughs> when I came out to him as transgender. He said, that's cool you literally should just pursue whatever makes you happy if you have decisions later just go for it like and then he literally said you only live once like dad never ever yolo me ever again please <laughs> but you're right <laughs> that's very true <laughs> so take advice from my dad just pursue happiness more or less see where it takes you and that's how you'll eventually come to terms with yourself well said yeah i love that yeah i agree if things change then they do things yeah. change all the time in life. Literally, that's the point <laughs> of life. <laughs> so yeah. don't restrict yourself. If things change and then you feel uncomfortable with something now, then you're uncomfortable with it. Be honest with yourself, mm. which is hard. Yeah. It's very tough, yeah. I actually really love your advice so far, Yasha, because you're very like logical and like feeling so like affect you. You're just like, no, it's <laughs> this. And like, you're right, it is like that, but I hate that answer because I would say no at the time, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I say I say it very logically now, but no, it's very good though. I think that's very important. It's important to have like a friend too, or people surrounding you to help you like keep yourself grounded and keep yourself like, you know, not going off somewhere in your own space. Like it just hold you down to really make you think about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a really lovely point at which to end this, actually. <laughs> um, we're about at the one hour mark and I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. I, I recognize actually that we have 115 questions on this wow. form. <laughs> I appreciate you all being so girl. curious. We clearly have I mean, a lot more ground to cover. Maybe you will see these people on another I don't podcast mind panel going in the for future. a little bit longer. If we could, we could. But, yeah. Um, I, I think we should, we'll, we'll make this into a series. There, there's so much ground to cover. There's no way we could even, even if we add another half hour here, there's only- I a, wanna go back so to doing my assignment. <laughs> yeah, you have homework. So <laughs> I promise you all one hour, we're gonna end it here. <laughs> so, okay. Basically, I recognize there, there's a lot more ground to cover. We will maybe try to get to it. And I will, all, all of you here with me, thank you for taking the time. And also maybe I'll hit you up again if you wanna do this again. Um, we could even do it Always smaller down. format so we can dig in a little deeper. Um, so like fewer people each time or something. Uh, I do want to end on a uh, general a general dating advice question, right? So like based on your current understanding and your experiences, if someone were to ask you for your number one hot dating tip as an asexual or aero ace person, um, what would your advice be? And we'll go, we'll just go like video order. So Lex in first. Um. I wrote something down. My first one I wrote down was, I wrote down, don't overthink it. <laughs> don't 
I feel like a lot of people who um, fuck themselves over when they start dating is that they start like coming up with snarls in their head and start like coming up with snarls about the other person, about things that haven't happened yet. And like these things that haven't happened yet affect how you approach that other person in real life. So like you need to like respect them by like trusting what they say and what your interactions are like and don't make up so much fantasy bullshit in your, your head that it incapacitates you from like actually interacting with them properly. <laughs> if you've watched Bochi, don't be Bochi. Yeah, don't be Bochi. <laughs> be Bochi and evolve out of it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very, very good piece of advice. Um, Rin, are you ready with one? Yes. Um, so I mentioned communication is super important and I still agree communication is super important when you want to start any relationship uh but in order to have um the ability to communicate with any potential partners that you might come with you need to work on yourself first you need to uh be confident enough in who you are and that's that can be like anything that could be like your job your life your uh, current situation what you do um, you have to be happy with who you are first. You don't want to go into a relationship carrying baggage about yourself or something like that. Make sure you have all that kind of settled, wrapped up, put away, or something you're just going to carry with you and understand that's how it's going to be. Um, essentially, making sure you have a foundation for yourself. Make sure you are happy with what you're doing, who you are, before you start including someone else into your life at an intimate level, I would say. And don't forget to communicate with them too. Right? <laughs> Communication so sure you right with yeah. yourself and with everyone else. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well All right, Pat. Um, I think that my top tip is to just take your time and don't put too much pressure on yourself. It's okay to take things slow and to just, uh, I don't know. I keep saying this, but like, it's okay to just be friends with someone. Um, and uh, like before deciding to go any further, just seeing how comfortable you are in yourself and how comfortable you are with them um, because ultimately uh, you just want to have fun have a good time and I think that that's the point of dating but <laughs> you guys are all so eloquent <laughs> I was honestly expecting some some really silly tips but also these were I was like, wondering like profound. do you want like a silly tip <laughs> I can give you a silly tip yeah <laughs> what's the silly tip Rin? what's the silly <laughs> tip oh actual advice okay no i gotta think of a silly tip now <laughs> <laughs> i'm seeing chat say always eat your veggies i think that's a very valid tip. <laughs> always eat your veggies i think so that the food. the tip from the uh ace and uh arrow ace person is to not date right so yeah true <laughs> just, just give up <laughs> just don't do it just give up no dating <laughs> All right, Yasha, so you're up. <laughs> of actual advice, I think. And I think it's to just always be honest, even when you don't know how you feel. So if you come into a relationship and you are just like, maybe you're just having a bad day and you take it out on them, right? And you just be like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just feeling really frustrated. I don't know why. I I'm just letting you know that. Just so they understand that the no miscommunications happen, right? If you don't have to always know where your feelings are coming from. But if you can just put a word to somewhat describe them, at least give the other person some context. I feel like a lot of issues that happen in relationships is always miscommunication, right? Oh, I kept it in, or I was like, I didn't want to hurt their feelings, or like, oh, I was scared to say this, or I didn't know how to word it. You know, like sometimes you just have to say the thing and don't have a reason, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow, you know? And then maybe by tomorrow, you'll be able to word it better. Mm -hmm. So just try your best to be honest, even with yourself. I feel like that's really hard. So. Mm -hmm. Yasha and I had this conversation, person? I think, probably when we were rooming at AX, where I was like, I'm really out of touch with my feelings. And Yasha was like, I'm really in touch with my feelings. And I feel like yeah. it's like it's a <laughs> muscle you can work out and get better at, identifying like where you're at mentally and emotionally. And yeah. actually a tool that I found really helpful, if anyone also struggles with this the same way I do, um, is called the feelings wheel. So if you Google the feelings wheel, it's like, imagine like a big color wheel, right? And in the center, it has basic emotions like sad, mad, scared, joyful, peaceful, 
um, powerful. And then each of those splits into more and more specific terms. And there's three layers total. So on the very outside, you get very specific words like isolated, inferior, daring, fascinating, right? So if you, like me, have trouble understanding your emotions, try using the, the feelings wheel. It's one of my favorite things. Wait, side note though, also learned in my psych class that at least society, at least teach men, you only have three feelings, sad, mad, and glad, right? You can be sad if someone's dying. You, mostly you react with anger when you don't understand your feelings, right? And then you can be glad and happy. So like a lot of people end up lashing out with anger when they're actually just feeling sad and they just don't know how to like express it. So just be like, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. It's not good but it's not you and i need to figure it out and i think it's okay to be really honest with that because you don't always need an answer and don't be an asshole but like don't you, you don't need an answer right now at least just mm -hmm. express that you don't know and that's okay mm -hmm. to not know you don't always need to know everything that flows perfectly into my hot tip which is basically that it's okay to have more questions than answers and it's okay to keep asking questions and to like try and answer those questions without necessarily seeking answers to those questions, right? Um, the so-called Socratic method where every question gives rise to 10 more questions and like, and that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes that's how the path of exploration works and that's how you figure yourself out slowly but surely. And you will make a lot of mistakes on the way, but if you don't make the mistakes, you'll never ever learn anything. So it's better to, to fumble and ask stupid questions and make stupid mistakes and make yourself look dumb. And that's better than sitting there doing nothing, never asking questions and not exploring anything, so. Otherwise, how will you ever figure anything out? <laughs> That's true. All right. I think that about concludes this conversation. Thank you all very much for giving me a whole hour and almost an hour and a half, basically. No, it is an hour and a half of your time because we set up also for a while. Um, and chat, thank you also. I was monitoring chat the whole time. Thank you, Mods, also for helping to monitor. Um, there was some really good discussion in there. I saw y'all like vibing off each other a lot. So I hope everyone felt like this was a space of good community for you all, um, panelists included. And hopefully we can do this again on other topics. Yeah. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. I have to go write a soap. Thank you for See inviting you all next me. Time. Thank you. Bye. 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 All right. Uh, <laughs>